Before I start, you guys should know that if you go to combocourses.com, I've got courses on how to get into cybersecurity. I've got how to market yourself if you happen to already be an IT person and you want to go into security or you're an IT person, you just want to market yourself, period. I've got a free course. I've got a very popular risk management information system security officer foundations course where I talk about the practical implementation of being an information system security officer doing the risk management framework process, the NIST 837. Let's get into some plan of action and milestones. Somebody asked me a great question the other day. They said, then we're going to cover what to do if you're a new risk management framework person and you need to check an SSP. What do you check? And this is just from my experience. What do I check when I come in? And, and in my experience, what would I advise you to definitely check so that there's no gotchas for you? That is a great question because this one, <laughs> it's like the first thing you need to know when you go in, to be honest with you. And I'll tell you why. Then the last thing we're going to do is somebody asked a question in the comments, security implementation plan. How do you do it? What is it? Things like that. We'll briefly touch on that. That's something I would really do in the course What I'm going to deep dive into in a course, but I will kind of touch on it. So right now we're on what do you check for a system security plan? Um, so I have some notes here. First off, let me bring up different versions of a system security plan. This right here is one version, one form of a system security plan you might see, where it's a an Excel spreadsheet. And I mean, God forbid you have to work on one of these, especially in a large organization. They are brutal. It's not fun at all. It's not a fun thing to do, to be honest with you, to work on those. Wait, hold on. What did I? Sorry about that to work on these things because they just get very cumbersome and there's just a lot of stuff going on. Just to show you like what it looks like. What it is is each one of these is security controls and you can have like a couple hundred of these that you gotta go through. Depends on the organization. Depends on the system, like some of these won't be valid for a system. So you've gotta go through each one of these and you gotta put, the main thing you're doing is number one, seeing if it's implemented right you would say okay this one is implemented and then you'd say security control designation is it a common security control is it a, a system a specific or a hybrid and just briefly a common con control is is a control that the organization uses uh, anybody who walks in the building is subject to that control a, a good example of that might be uh, physical security Everybody who walks in the security into the building has physical security they inherit, right? So a certain level of personnel security and physical security, everyone inherits that control. A specific security control would be like Organization X, which is a HR unit in a certain building. They only use Windows 95 systems, right? I mean, I hope that's never the case with anybody, but they only use Windows 95 systems and... There's a specific control that has to be applied to those Windows 95 systems that is specific to those systems. Um, that's what a specific system security control is. It's a technical control that goes on a, on a system. And then a hybrid is a mixture between the two. An example of a hybrid might be cat cards, smart cards. A smart card is controlled by two different organizations. It's controlled by maybe a third party organization who who gets the cat cards created and puts your information on it but it's also it can also be a system specific control because the person who who owns those windows 95 or whatever windows 7 windows 10 systems they have to put a specific they have to open up that specific computer to log in whenever you put the card in so that might be a hybrid control anyway i got sidetracked there but here we are on a system security plan and we're talking about what do you do if you're coming in and you need to look at this and here's why this is a great question so a lot of new risk management framework people it, myself included whenever I walk into a new organization and I'm doing risk management framework for an organization right 
the one thing they're going to ask me to do is look at all their documents. They're going to let, have me look at, then the main thing they want me to look at is the system security plan. And so your first question is going to be, well, okay, what do you want me to look at? How should it look, right? So that is what we're going to cover. Like, how should it look? I'm going to tell you guys like what I've gone through, like what has been important for me to look at and some missteps that I've made in the very recent past. <laughs> so I'm, I took some notes here that I think are really good stuff. Um, let me see if I can show you guys this without revealing too much of anybody else's information. Okay, here we go. So I have a list here that I broke out of things that I look at whenever I go to an organization and things that I, I haven't looked at and it got me in trouble, right? It's some, it came back to bite me. So one of the first things is that to ask yourself is what does the organization want the SSP to look like? Now that is really important because every organization has a different kind of SSP. Like they're not always going to use this style of SSP. They might have a word document that looks like like this they might have something that looks like this right and right off the bat you're gonna know like what they use because they're gonna they're gonna hand it to you they're like oh here's the here's the ssps you'll they'll give you your computer and then they'll say they'll give you access somehow to the ssps and sometimes it'll be a database sometimes it'll be spreadsheets sometimes it'll be word documents it just depends right and by the way i got this stuff off the internet this is not client information nothing like that i would, I would never share that kind of stuff but uh, anyway, so yeah, here's a, an example of what one would look like. You would know what this looks like. So the real question is, what level of detail do they want? That's the real question. Because, and that right there has got me in trouble. Because I'll apply my experience. Like it, I'll, I'll be working for a DOD client like years ago, right? I come to another federal client and I'm doing what the DOD does. Like we had something like this. Like we would have this something like this document right here where you put your your justification in here, your it's called implementation statement, right? It it's an explanation of how you're implementing the AU controls. Let's stay with let's stick with AU controls since that's what we've been talking about. So here's A C A T AU controls, right? So let's go to AU four. We were talking about this storage capacity, that's AU four right there. So let's say we were talking about AU4, and I hope you guys can see this. Let me see if you can see this. Yeah, okay, there we go. So we're talking, here we are on AU4, and we would explain like how AU4 is implemented. Let me just move my face out of the way real quick so you can see what I'm doing. So here's AU4, and we, in the implementation statement, in the explanation, we would say, what's going on? We'd say that, POAM ID 0001-delta, no, it was like three or something, wasn't it? Three dash delta one is implemented. System did not have the capacity, will be complete by first quarter first quarter or second quarter, whatever right you just put this information and then say like have a, a reference in there like a, you would reference the poem that's what you do so that's just one thing you can do but this would fly at my previous organization but at the current one they wanted way more detail here so the level of detail really depends on the organization. So make sure that you are compliant with the organizations, not only what format they want, but the level of detail that, that they want. And if you don't know, like flat out, you could just flat out ask them, like what level of detail are you guys looking for? Is this good enough? You could like do one and say, is this level of detail good enough or do you want more? So that's one that has bitten me in the very recent past that I was doing what the previous organization, I was figured if it's good enough for this high level client that's way more secure than you guys, it should be good enough for you. But they're like, nah, we want a whole booklet in there. We want an entire dissertation of what's going on with this control. 
right? And to do the level of detail for these guys, I have to interview people. I literally, that's how much detail they wanted in each control, by the way. Anyway, so get with the organization to see what they want this, how, what level of detail and what they want it to look like when you're doing implementation statements, what kind of evidence, that kind of thing. Let me see. So another thing that you want to do is check the accuracy. This is this is a really big one. Because what happens with when they hire you, if you're a new risk management framework person, you're a new information system security officer, you come in and they say, here, Bruce, here's this SSP. We want you to take a look at this. We want you to update it, right? So a lot of times it hadn't been looked at in like a year, two years, right? And the information in there is three years old like it's old dates it's like some of it's not even relevant anymore the system has updated it's no longer windows 2008 is windows 16 now make sure the information is accurate go through with a fine tooth comb and make sure okay do they still have this windows 2010 system do they still use this do they still use that and then you know make changes or suggestions for changes if you're not the one who actually changes it but accuracy is really important. Double check the, the organization's documents and all that kind of stuff. All right. And it should be something that should be checked periodically with continuous monitoring. It's just not done, you know, to be honest with you. So another thing I do is update all referenced documents. This is a big one because that's, this is another thing that changes. Documents constantly change, right? So make sure every time they reference a document like in here i said here that uh we i referenced a document in our is it in the poem no in the in our ssp i referenced this document right here right this poem id is this poem id still relevant is this does this still exist and so i'd have to go and check to make sure that that's still that that's still good and sometimes it's, it's not it's no longer a poem they fixed it Another thing I do is update the POCs, the points of contact. Make sure all of those are because, you know, people move on, people move to other organizations, like somebody has replaced if they have any names in there. And even roles, sometimes even the role name has changed. Some organizations like in the past they would call a information system security officer used to be called an information assurance officer. You know, now they might even call it a cybersecurity officer or whatever. They change the names from time to time. Make sure the roles are the same. The titles that ref are referred to in the SSP are the same or up to date. And then the names. Anytime they name somebody, is this still the head of this department? Or is this the, still the CIO? Or is this still, you know, like that. So another thing is update the artifacts. This one I think is going to be... Well, it depends. I was going to say it's going to be easy, but it really depends. Like it depends if it's a recent scan. Like if, if the organization is using scans to validate, say, that the AU controls are implemented. Like let's say they have 100 servers, so they have to run like a, some sort of an internal scan to make sure that a certain thing is, is checked. All the boxes are checked for event logs turned on, right? So they run like a, they have a SCAP tool that does that. A SCAP tool can tell you like, it'll go into the GPO and then look and see if that auditing log is, is, on, is, is actually enabled and it'll tell you. And so if those logs haven't been done in a while, you might have to go to the organization and say, hey, we need a new scan, you know, or network diagrams are out of date all the time. Make sure the network diagrams are, are still accurate, things like that. So that's what I do when I walk in the door. Those are some mistakes that I've made, like that I didn't check this or didn't check that. And it came back to bite me. I hope that that's something that you guys you know, will take to maybe to your next job and take that to heart. Okay, let's move on to the next step.